It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC South. It's the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts, and it's coming up next on Madden NFL 25. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League finds us in the Hoosier State at Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis. Set for a good one here in the AFC South. Glad you're on board with us. Mike Tirico, Greg Olson. Greg, this always the division of opportunity. Can you get everything right and make a run here? Each team has had its little moment. And as we sit here in 2024, one more time, this is a division with a chance to make something happen. Yeah, and what's so cool about this division, Mike, is it seems like it's changed hands year in and year out, especially here as of late. The surprise teams around the league the last couple seasons have been from the AFC South. A lot of that's been, they haven't been the strongest. They're all trying to figure out their long-term quarterback play. But when you talk about optimism and hope, not only in the building, but around the city, these teams in the AFC South, they all think this is our year. This will be returned from the six. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. Indianapolis led out by their quarterback, Anthony Richardson. The number four overall pick in 2023 had some highlight moments, but injured most of the year. Greg now in his second year in the NFL out of Florida. We throw around so loosely these days, Mike, the idea of being a physical freak, right? This specimen that we just aren't accustomed to seeing, let alone at the quarterback position. The arm talent, the ridiculous blend of size and speed, the ability to make plays with your feet and extend. All of these things come to mind when we look at this guy. Now, going forward, how does he strike that balance between being the game changer and that aggressive athlete with the ball in his hand, but also finding a way to stay on the field and be able to develop? Make no mistake about it, though. The energy in this stadium is palpable, and he's the biggest reason why. Second and seven. Out of the shotgun, Richardson. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. Do a nice job there to move the chains early in this drive, but now as they approach midfield, continue to keep your foot on the gas. Don't get conservative. Don't start sitting on the ball. Cross midfield and go. Anytime you find yourself on your opponent's side of the field, you have to be thinking points. On first down, it's Richardson. That's complete. Jonathan Taylor out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. A big gainer for Indianapolis. 35 yards. Well, they've come out swinging here on this opening drive through the air, and that's exactly what they wanted to do. Generate some early chunk plays and try to get some points. Set to go now on first and ten. From the gun, Richardson. He'll get that one to Taylor, complete. And he's not going to be able to get away. Very good coverage on the perimeter. It goes down as a loss of yards. Receiver just finds himself in a really nice groove. And there's these weird times in the game, Mike, where it just seems like every ball comes your way. Every play they call, you're wide open. And... You just find yourself in one of those grooves that athletes talk about. So they got to continue to ride the hot hand because right now on that field, there's no mistake in who it is. And nice work there after the catch. He's a little short of the first down after a gain of seven. There's a lot of ways to get the ball in the hands of your running backs, and it's not always by just handing it to them. In this case, it's a simple check down, picks up a good gain, brings up third down. Here's a third down and four. Richardson to throw. He gets this one complete to Pittman. They get 14 yards and set up first and goal. They've done a nice job spreading the ball around. Make the defense have to account for as many different weapons as possible here early. I think back to our conversation with this coaching staff, Mike. They identified this guy as someone they needed to get involved early and often, so... That might be his first target, and I don't think it's going to be his last. 
And good yardage there after the catch. They'll wind up with a gain of seven on first down. These are the worst. I, I had a couple years, Mike, where I swear I got tackled inside the one-yard line ten times. And then you look back and you're like, man, how many touchdowns did I leave on the board because I couldn't get one more yard. Now, for him individually, not ideal. But right now they're on the doorstep of the end zone and they got to find a way to put that ball across the goal line. He was looking for Michael Pittman with that one. And now third and goal coming up. So instead of celebrating a touchdown... He's just heading back to his huddle, trying to keep his head up as everyone kind of looks at him sideways. If that ball hits your hands at this level, you've just got to make the catch. That's what your quarterback's counting on. And he will power his way into the end zone. Jonathan Taylor, touchdown, Indy. A terrific way to start this one. Not only a touchdown, but a nice long march down the field. Makes it a long walk back to the bench for the defense. Mike, that's about as good as you can imagine starting a game offensively. To be able to sustain that many plays and be able to cap it off with a touchdown, that is a dream start for this offense. Matt Gay on for the extra point. The kick is good. And the Colts will take a 7-0 lead. Seven nothing is our score as this kick is sent into the air. A safe kick taken at the five, and he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. The Texans come out with the rookie of the year from last year in the NFL, C.J. Stroud. He was the number two overall pick out of Ohio State. Greg, a talented quarterback here. If there's going to be a poster child for just how flawed the pre-draft process can be at times, I think this guy's at the top. I mean, just think, last year, people are nitpicking him going into his rookie year. He can't do this. He can't do that. And what does he do? He comes out and has arguably the greatest rookie quarterback season in NFL history, not only bringing his franchise back to life, but really establishing himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the entire league. Here's second and nine. Again, they'll give it to Mixon. That was some good downhill running to get him about six yards and set up a much more manageable third down. This just shows why you can't count on just one guy to take him down. He's a powerful enough runner. You've got to have guys coming in support when that first hit is made. It takes a team effort to stop him, especially once he gets going. Ben in motion is Brown. They'll try and run for this with Mixon. So, fourth down, and it's the former chief, Tommy Townsend, to punt for Houston. Josh Downs set to return for the Colts. A fair catch taken here, and it's going to come right at the 15-yard line. They'll come up here first and ten. He 
here's Richardson. That's the tight end, Mullally Cox. And he'll be taken down rather swiftly after a gain of just three. It's not the big play they were hoping for, but first down efficiency, staying ahead of the chains, is what every offense is trying to find, and it brings up a manageable second down. A second down throw for Richardson. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. In motion comes Pittman. They show jet sweep and instead run it up the middle. And he'll manage to get this ahead for a pickup of five. on second down Richardson he's got a man that's Josh Downs and he's going to get this one out to the 43 yard line 10 yards the gain on the pitch and catch first down Indianapolis every once in a while it just comes down to you need somebody in the huddle to just make a play and it wasn't a whole lot fancy here the quarterback just dumps the ball down a quick underneath completion and then really it's the yards after catch that did the rest and that's what it takes you're not always going to have the perfect play you're not always going to dial up the perfect play against the perfect look sometimes players need to make plays and that was a good one there that's a gain of 11 and they'll move the chains with another first down on first down they'll stay with Taylor on the ground and the defense was ready for him this time. Did not have the same room to run. That one's no game. You want to see linebackers play downhill, Mike, meaning there's not a lot of side-to-side -side pursuit. They're attacking the line of scrimmage, attacking the ball carrier. That's exactly what we saw out of this guy here. He's able to make the stop at the line of scrimmage and keep it to no game. On second down, Richardson. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. They'll get maybe three out of that one, and it's going to set up third down. Just a little slow developing on that screenplay there. It was pretty obvious to the entire defense exactly what was going on. Nobody was thinking pass. Nobody was getting back into their drops, and just nowhere for that back to go. From the gun on third down, Richardson. And that is incomplete. A rare miss for a quarterback that we've seen really come out on fire throughout this entire contest. I mean, his completion percentage, Mike, is well above league average. And frankly, it's really the biggest reason why they find themselves out in front. So that'll bring up fourth down. And that'll bring on Rigoberto Sanchez to punt. As they'll say no to the long field goal and hope to pin them deep. This one angles out of bounds. And the mark comes inside the 15-yard line. The Texans offense ready to take over for their second possession. This will begin at their own 13-yard line. So work to do starting with this first and 10. It'll begin on the ground, and here's Mixon. And a good one here. He'll be marked down up past the 25-yard line. 13 yards to start that drop. And a quick first down. We are through one. 7-0 is our score. We'll come back to Indianapolis in a moment. break the huddle coming up now for first and ten they'll go right back to Mixon room to run at the 40 
And he's going to be taken down on the other side of the 50-yard line. Rough start to this drive for the defense. Back-to-back -back big plays. This one for 27 yards. This is a combination of footwork and vision. His ability to kind of weave through traffic and understand where the holes were. It's a really nice job working through some bodies and picking up a big game. On first and ten, here's Stroud. And a good effort there defensively. It's knocked away and incomplete. He's looking for Joe Mixon coming out of the backfield. And it'll bring up second down. Up until that incompletion, they've done a really nice job on this drive, Mike, picking up fresh sets of downs. And typically, throwing the ball on first down is a great way to do it. It's actually the easiest down in football to operate in. But now they find themselves in second and ten. Do you keep it in the air and try to get the first down here? Or is the idea to just make third down manageable and take your chances picking up a key third down? Defensive coordinators preach all the time, play past defense with vision. It's exactly the case here. They're able to rally to the ball, keep that to a short game. From the shotgun, C.J. Stroud. He's got his tight end. It's Schultz. And he's going to have the first down. It is a gain of six. Good conversion on third down. These curl routes, he's been running these routes since he was a young kid in Pop Warner football, and I like to call it pulling the string. You've got the defender thinking you're going downfield, and you stick that foot in the ground, work back to the quarterback, friendly to the ball, and really nice job picking up the first down. And he'll work forward for about three. It's second down. the gun. Here's Stroud. Throwing left side there, but it is incomplete. There's a fine line between trusting your arm and having a little bit too much faith in your arm, right? I think this is one of those situations here, Mike, where there was nowhere to go with the ball. He tries to fit that one in there anyway, and he's lucky that it just falls incomplete. From the gun here on third down, it's Stroud. Oh, that's the one thing they couldn't have there, the sack that might take them out of field goal range. When you can bring cornerbacks on pressure, man, that changes everything for the defensive play caller. Offenses spend all week worrying about linebackers, defensive linemen. How are they going to protect the quarterback? But when you can time up a secondary pressure like this, man, oftentimes there's no answer for it. Here's Tommy Townsend now. He's on for the second time. we will try to get something inside the tent. So that one's going to land out of bounds, and the official's going to mark it right at the 20-yard line. The Colts offense ready to take over possession of the football. They lead it here in the second quarter, 7-0, as they begin with a first and 10. In motion comes Pittman. They fake the jet sweep and will hand it up the middle. And that's the way you want to run it on first down. A gain of seven. Here's a second and three forthcoming. Off the zone read, this is Richardson. I fumbled the football. And the defense has it. You know, it's amazing, Mike, that guys still end up fumbling the ball because I can tell you from experience, the first 15 minutes of every offensive practice 
is ball security circuit. And that could be a combination of multiple things. Had to go to the ground without getting loose to the ball, almost like the art of falling. It could be running over bags or through bags as guys take swats at the ball trying to knock it out. There are so many ways to simulate what the game is like because at the end of the day, if you want to win in the NFL, protecting the ball is the number one priority and it cannot be stressed enough. So they come to the line for first down and 10. To throw, it's Stroud. He's got his man. That's Nico Collins. After the catch, he gets that forward for a gain of nine. Second and a yard. Stroud. That's to the big ticket acquisition. Stephon Diggs. And he'll be taken down. First time these two have connected this afternoon, and it'll wind up being a first down. Sudden change. So you find yourself defensively a little bit on your heels. Your offense just turned the ball over, and now you've got to go out and make a stand. Well, so far this offense has moved the ball pretty quickly, but can they dig in and at least force a field goal? Five yards from the house. They've got it first and goal. Crowd to throw. To the end zone there, but it is incomplete. Nico Collins was the intended receiver there. And it'll bring up second and goal. That's one he'd love to have back. An opportunity to score six was right there for the taking. Just wasn't quite meant to be. They'll send a tight end in motion. On the give, this is Mixon. Let's give him a yard down to the three-yard line. Good job so far by the defense protecting the short field. Now it's third and goal. Now Stroud. Over the top. He's got it. Nico Collins. Touchdown, Texans. Tight spaces down there. Things happen quick. Greg, a quick decision and great execution for the score. You're exactly right, Mike. Down here this close to the goal line, everybody's clock has to speed up. Not only the quarterback processing to get the ball out of his hand, but you have to win as a receiver quickly and give the quarterback somewhere to go with the ball. It was that quickness at the line of scrimmage that led to that touchdown. Now Kaimi Fairbear on for the extra point. He's got it. And the Texans will level things out at seven apiece. So back to level after the touchdown in time for the kickoff. Josh Downs now on the return. Oh, he's got room past the 30. Nice job on the return. He's down close to the 35-yard line. Here's the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over once more. We'll try to break out of this deadlock. We are all even at 7 as they start this drive first and 10. Looking to throw. Richardson. That's to the left side and taken in by Downs. The receiver thought he had a nice soft spot in that zone coverage, and he settles down to give a nice target to the quarterback. 
But the defense had eyes on him the entire time. Secure rally tackle prevents that from turning into a big play. They'll work now on second and four. Richardson will give it to Taylor. And he's going to take this past the 45. That's good enough for a first down. I think this second down call, Mike, they were hoping that at worst they had themselves set up for a third down and short. But there's no need for third down. He was able to get enough on second, and they get a fresh set of downs. A fresh set of downs to work with. It is first down and 10. Richardson operating from the pistol. Trying the left side and caught by Pittman. And good yardage there after the catch. They'll wind up with a gain of seven on first down. Here's second and three to go. Zone read. It's a give to Taylor. And he'll be taken down as we tick down to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play. First half, all tied at seven. We'll come back to Indianapolis after this. They'll come up to third and three. Throwing is Richardson. Open man, left side, he's got it. That's his third catch of this first half, and good enough for a first down. And really the key to this play was just how fast he was able to get through his progressions. His mind was able to process and go from one to two to three so quickly that he was able to get the ball to the right target on time and I think so often those two things are different being open is one thing being open and getting the ball on time that's what leads to success and that's what we saw here that's catch three just on this drop and it gets his team a first down well if it ain't broke don't fix it they clearly have a mismatch in their favor and every time they've looked his way he's continued to make big plays I'm this coordinator. I think I'm giving him one more shot and see if he can push this thing over the goal line and come away with six. Richardson to throw here on first and ten. He's got it at about the eight. The Colts are going to have themselves a first and goal. He's out of bounds at the seven-yard line. A first down there on a gain of 12. Ball sitting at the seven. First and goal. Out of shotgun, Richardson. That one pinballs around, but it is incomplete. Jonathan Taylor, the intended receiver. And it'll be second and goal. Here in the first half, we've seen nothing but connections from these two guys. I mean, they've come out completely on fire. So the defense finally gets a stop. And really the first time we've seen these guys be a little bit off. To the goal line and in. Pierce, touchdown, Indianapolis. to add the PAT. It's up and through. And the Colts will move out to a 14-7 lead. Both teams ready to go once more as the kick's away. This one taken at the 7. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. 
The Texans offense and running back Joe Mixon heading out onto the field. They trail now 14 to 7 as they'll come up for first and 10. to throw is Stroud. That's complete. It's takedown. And they'll bring him down, but not until he gets to the 38-yard line. First and 10. To the left side, and caught by Schultz. Nice job here by the defense. Did a good job just covering up everything for the most part. So once this ball was caught, you really didn't have much of a choice but to just head out of bounds and pick up a modest game. Here's a second and six. Throwing is Stroud. He's back to Schultz. He's got it again. And he's going to be dropped after a pickup of about five. And this is where the versatility of the tight end position really starts coming into play. Not only do they have to line up with their hand on the ground in line, but they can occasionally split out in the slot. And man, they're too fast for linebackers, and a lot of times they're too big for defensive backs. Here's a timeout, Houston. That's their second, as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. to throw here on first and ten. A throw left side, but it's going to wind up in complete. He was looking for Stephon Diggs there, and that will lead to a second down. Pretty clear coming into this game that this offense felt that they had a distinct advantage running the ball. It was a matchup that they thought all week went in their favor, and so far the results indicate that they were spot on. He'll get this over the middle to Diggs. And he will have the first down here as they get into field goal range, down just shy of the 20. Second time they've connected on this drive, and 19 yards out of this one. Throwing from the pistol, Stroud. This one complete to Jordan. And he's going to be taken down. And the offense will take one here. Timeout with six. Left on the second quarter clock. Jaime Fairbairn coming on to try the field goal. This, about as short as you can get. Bear Barron's kick is good. And the Texans are back within four at 14 to 10. And that's a really nice boost here before the break. I mean, you work the clock well. You're able to steal some points. The biggest thing is you're able to build a little momentum now going into the locker room at halftime. Three seconds, all that remain in this first half as that one's away. This kick is fielded in the end zone, but no move to bring it out. It's touchback, and that ball will come out to the 30-yard line. Here's first and ten. Richardson to throw. He'll take a deep shot for Downs. And this one is pulled in. What a great 
Brown. And a critical tackle there. They're getting close to scoring. Instead, they get nothing. Time has run out. This first half has come to an end. Okay, Mike, thank you. More from you and Greg in a moment. But for now, welcome one and all to our EA Sports Halftime Reports. We saw former rushing champ Jonathan Taylor be a big-time factor in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, Coach, thanks a bunch. We'll see which team's adjustment's going to pay dividends here. Likely going to play a big role in who wins this one. First half played out a bit as we expected. We'll see if there's a surprise coming up. Both teams set to go in the second half is underway. And he'll be brought down right around the 25-yard line. The Texans offense looking to get back to work as we begin this third quarter. The trail by four, a touchdown gives them the lead. Drive begins with first and ten. fortunate to get past the line of scrimmage call it a yard at most Zaire Franklin that time there for the tackle a second down throw for Stroud that's caught right side the tight end Schultz a gain of 11 on that one. First down for Houston. This may look like a simple connection, Mike, just pitch and catch, but I can promise you the amount of time these two guys have spent together on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, just getting on the same page, seeing the game through the same set of eyes, it makes what's pretty difficult seem a lot easier. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield. Give them 12 on that one. They are on the march. Another first down. This is one of those cases where having high-end speed in the backfield can be such a game-changer. The offensive linemen don't need to hold their blocks quite as long. You give this guy a little bit of a crease, and man, he is gone. Stroud to throw here on first down. A short throw pulled in by Schultz. And good yardage there after the catch. They'll wind up with a gain of seven on first down. The drag route. We used to say this is day one install. Every single offense in the NFL has this sort of route, especially for the tight end position. And depending on the speed and the run after catch ability of the tight end, sometimes it can lead to some of the biggest gains. Open man left side is Brown. He's got it. And they bring him down, but not until they get inside the 30-yard line. First grab of the game for Brown. Good enough for a first down. Well, the run after catch is certainly nice, and they're definitely going to take it. But watch the savviness of the route running. Certain guys just have a better feel for running these slant routes than others, and it's a nice result. First and ten. Here's Stroud. He's got it inside the five. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Bear 
to add the extra point. His kick is good. And the Texans move out to a three-point edge, 17 to 14. And so after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. This taken in at the 8-yard line. And he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. Well, he had such a great first half throwing the football. There's no reason to think, Mike, coming out here for the start of the third, that anything's going to change. He's picked up right where he left off, and the numbers are indicative of just how well he's played. From the 25, they'll go to work. First and 10. From the gun, Richardson. That's the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. I'm not sure what was the more difficult aspect of the play. Winning his route versus man coverage or catching this pass, because that quarterback... He put a little extra sauce on that one to get it there on time, and he's able to secure a really nice catch. Gets it away quickly, and it's caught. And they'll be set up now. Up past the 40 with that one. A gain there of 10 yards. First down, Indianapolis. Just seems like every year, Mike, the tight end position just continues to grow within the passing game and establishes a bigger and bigger role. And... Listen, I know I'm biased, but if you want to have a good passing game, you better have a good tight end. He'll work forward for a couple. Christian Harris there on the stop. Now after the run, we get a stoppage for an injured player. The training staff going to look, and we'll step out for a moment. Look him up on a second down and eight. Now Richardson. That's caught inside by Pittman on the slant. From the gun on third down, Richardson. And he'll be stopped short of a first down, and that will necessitate a call to the punt team. It's fourth down. I think this is one of those plays that when the ball carrier watches this back in the film room tomorrow, he's going to be a little frustrated with himself. If he could just have made that one guy miss, he picks up the first down. Instead, he gets brought down short of the sticks, and now they got a fourth down decision to make. And we will not have a return here. This one angled out of bounds. C.J. Stroud and the Houston offense set to get going again. And we run you through the highlights here. It has been a very big performance from the quarterback position. Instrumental in leading and executing. And now trying to finish strong and take his team to the finish line. Schultz is the motion man. He'll go play action with Stroud. And he's able to gain yardage out of this one before he slides. Well, give him some credit. Initially, that looked like it was going to be a sack. He's able to escape the pressure and get away. Picks up a little bit of yardage, but at least he avoids taking that shot.
On second down, Stroud. And that one knocked away. It's incomplete. So often we see when those balls get deflected up into the air, they usually turn into interceptions. I think the offense dodged the bullet here, and they're fortunate there was nobody in the area to come down with that pick. Third and six. From the shotgun, C.J. Stroud. That one is batted away. Incomplete. No separation that time. Tightly defended. It brings up fourth down. Well, not exactly breaking news here, Mike. They got speed on the perimeter that just not a lot of teams in the NFL have. So even though that ball falls incomplete, I think they have to continue to do it. Continue to pressure this defense and make them defend the entire field. Because as they're worried about him running by them, there is a lot of space open underneath. the 39 here's a first and 10 now it's Richardson he'll keep it and a nice run there he'll be stopped just shy of a first down a pickup of nine good decision by the quarterback in this situation all you're looking to do is have a positive play he decides to pull it and that's exactly what he's able to do They'll run out of the gun. It's Taylor. Trying to find some place to go, but nothing developing. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of one. The offense thinks that they can just kind of plow this one up there in the middle and keep the chains moving, but not on this defense. Not only do they not pick up the first down, but after suffering that loss, now they've got some decisions to make on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. That's great work to get in there and make things difficult defensively, setting up a fourth down. It's rare to see an offense that finds themselves trailing and say, well, their quarterback's been actually one of their biggest bright spots. Usually that doesn't go hand in hand. So it's a little surprising to see him miss a throw like that on a day where he's completed passes at a highly efficient rate. And no chance of a run back here. This one's going to sail out of bounds. Texans offense and their running back set to go once more they lead by a field goal as they go to work with a first and ten gun here Stroud trying the right side taken in by Collins he's got a touchdown on the books from earlier and that catch gets him a first down well any fear they might have had that they'd come out of the halftime break flat has completely gone out the window immediately back in the attack mode continuing to take the fight to the defense they're not content Mike here just having the lead they're looking to extend it a couple more plays like that they're going to find themselves in scoring territory here very quickly. Throughout this entire game, we've really seen this quarterback operate very efficiently, not only being able to spread the ball to multiple playmakers, Mike, but really complete a high percentage of his passes. So can't let that last incomplete break what's been a really nice rhythm so far. Throwing on second down, Stroud. And he's going to be brought down up past the 45. It'll be a pickup of 10. First down for Houston. I'd like to see them do a better job here the rest of the game, Mike, just disguising the coverage from the pre-snap look to the post-snap look. And what I mean is, when you have a quarterback at this level and what they see before the ball's in their hands is the exact same thing they see once they do get the ball, everything is just so much easier for them to process. Change the look. Change the coverages. Move your safeties. 
make the quarterback have to process with the ball in his hand. Well defended there. The quarterback's trying to attack this defense outside the numbers. Those really wide angle throws near the sideline sometimes can be very hard to defend. So give a lot of credit to this secondary. They were all on the same page, and the ball falls incomplete. Timing and trust. Critical elements of this quick passing game. If your target and the quarterback are not on the same page, it winds up being an incompletion and a wasted down. Here's a third and ten. To throw, it's Stroud. He'll take a shot here for the end zone. That is caught. What a throw. Touchdown, Texans. Two touchdowns for him now on the afternoon. They get the job done in the air. Greg, that is a play we see often. It's also a play we see work very often. Mike, that four vertical route, it puts a ton of pressure on the secondary. But in order to do that, you have to give your quarterback time for those receivers to get downfield. Give credit to the offensive line. That's exactly what they did. They're able to take advantage for the strike. Now Fairbairn for the extra point. He's got it. And the Texans go up by 10. 24 to 14 is their lead. And so after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. On the return, this is down. And he'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drive. The Colts offense ready to see what they can do with this next possession. The deficit is 10, 24 to 14. So work to do as they come up for first and 10. On play action, Richardson. He's got his tight end, Branson. And he'll be brought down, but not before they get this all the way up near midfield. First time they've looked his way all game long. But he comes through with the grab and a first down. Whatever they've talked about in the locker room at the halftime break seems to have worked. They've come out with a new established energy. You could see it when they took the field. Now this offense seems to be building on it because with that chunk play, just a little bit of rhythm that they can build off of. They got a long way to go to get back into this game, but so far off to a good start. On first and 10, here's Richardson. And this one is caught by Pierce. And he's going to be taken down right at the 25-yard line. Another big play and another first down. 26 on that one. Throwing a comeback route against zone coverage, it could be a little bit tricky. Remember, in zone, the defender's eyes are on the quarterback. So if your receiver doesn't sell that right and this ball's not thrown on time, you're going to end up watching that defender take this thing back the other way. So, three quarters now in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. On second down, Richard This drive's gonna continue. They bring him down, but not before he picks up First and goal for his team. These are the type of plays that drive a coach crazy in the film room, and you have to learn as a quarterback to avoid. You can take some chances. You can push the ball downfield, but not only to pick up a couple yards. You got to pick your chances of when you want to be aggressive, and you got to make sure you make better decisions going forward. 
And this is too far over the end line. It's incomplete. They let a golden opportunity slip away on that one. That's the matchup that they wanted. They just couldn't quite capitalize on it. So the ball still at the eight-yard line for second down and goal. They'll run. And some space opening up as he works it down to the two. Two plays at their disposal, but they'd love to get it right here on third and goal. And he's going nowhere on this one. Met and dropped behind the line, and now it is fourth and goal. Just feels like this has been the story of the day for this offense. Just unable to get anything going on the ground, and a big reason they find themselves trailing, and another loss of yards. So out comes Matt Gay in a big spot. This to get back to a one-possession game. And this one right down the middle. It's good. And they are indeed back within one score. It's always a little bit of a letdown, Mike. You find yourself deep in the red zone, and you have to settle for a short field goal like that. In this case, he's able to put it through, and they get three. So the field goal makes it a one-score game here in the fourth quarter as they kick it away. From the six, here comes a return. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. What's the old saying, Mike? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And at this point, there's just really no reason to not just continue to target him. He's been running free all game long, and you can see the numbers. They bear that out. It's evident right from the start that they were going to look his way early and often, and I think it turned out to be a pretty good game plan. On first down, it's Stroud. That one caught by Schultz, the tight end. After the catch, he gets that forward for a gain of nine. So the hope is, when you call these underneath drag routes, you're trying to have your tight end come out the backside of the defense in space. So when you put the ball on him early, it leads to big yards after the catch. In this case, they don't get the real big play they were hoping for, but they'll definitely take it. They'll run with Mixon. And he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not happen here. I think he's going to lose a yard. You know at this point, the defense has to sell out and stop the run. You know exactly what the offense is trying to get accomplished by keeping the ball on the ground. But now the question remains, are they willing to take some risk here and put the ball in the air on third down? Or do they play it safe and keep running the clock by keeping the ball on the ground? That ball is caught on the side right and both feet inbounds. A big third down pickup for a first down. One of the things that makes him one of the best receivers in the NFL, Mike, is his ability to create separation downfield. He makes it so easy for his quarterback to not only find him, but to constantly create a nice throwing window like he did right there. They'll come up first and 10 at the 40. They'll run out of the gun with Mixon. And that one shut down pretty quickly. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. The integrity of the defense, Mike, is based on every defender holding their gap. That's exactly what we saw out of this defensive tackle. Not only did he hold his gap, he's able to shed his block and make the play. Second down, here's a run, and here's Mixon. He's going to be taken down at about the 30. Pickup of 11 yards on that one. It's good for a Texans first down. Fourth quarter, you find yourself protecting a one-possession lead. 
It's a fine line, Mike, between do I keep the ball on the ground, continue to work the clock, or stay aggressive, try to extend this lead to a multiple possession game. That's the balance this play caller is dealing with right now. We'll come to the line now on second and two. Here's a give up the middle to Mixon. And he's going to be stopped in his tracks. He'll lose a couple of yards on that one. Second and two, you're thinking, I got two downs to get two yards. How hard can that be? Well, against this defense, it turns out to be a big challenge. They take you back for a loss of two. And now you find yourself on third down. Here's a third down and four. A run here with Mixon. They get 14 yards and set up first and goal. Four-minute offense, Mike, so what does it mean? One, make the defense use all of their remaining timeouts. Two, continue to pick up first downs, milk the clock. And then three, if possible, finish with the ball in your hands. An opportunity for what could be a game-sealing touchdown right here. First down and goal. Here's a run. That's a nice pickup, bringing it down to the three. Here now, second down and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he's into the end zone. That might be the knockout punch. Joe Mixon. Touchdown, Houston. Everything you want to do right there, Greg, in the fourth quarter, get the ball with the lead and extend it to a two-score advantage. Yeah, and I think this just might end up being too much to overcome. You said it. Once you get a two-score lead this late in the fourth quarter, there's just not enough possessions to be had to claw yourself back in it. Baron, good on the point after. And the Texans will open it up even further here in this fourth quarter. And so after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. The return starts from the five. He'll get this past the 20 before he's brought down shy of the 25-yard line. Here's first and 10. They'll drop to throw. The open man is the tight end, Branson. Nice gain here. He's going to be marked down at the 35-yard line. 12 yards on the game. That's good for a quick first down. It's been tough sledding for this offense all day today, Mike, but especially here in the second half. So they are just in desperate need of a spark, just something to get their offense into a little bit of a rhythm if they want to have any chance to find themselves back into this game here late. On first down, it's Richardson. Looking middle, and he's got downs. Now second and inches. Richardson operating from the pistol. And they'll get him down after a gain of five, but that is enough for a first down. Well, we'll give a little credit here defensively. Even though they allow the first down, we've seen defenses really struggle bringing this big tight end to the ground, and 
They didn't allow him to pick up a bunch of yards after contact, but he was able to get just enough to pick up the first down. Richardson to throw here on first and ten. A whole lot of chances on that one. It was bouncing around, but it falls incomplete. This is one of those situations that plays directly into the hands of the defense because think, like, they know this offense has to be one-dimensional. This has to be a pass. So what do they do? They bring in extra defensive backs. They clog up the back end. And at the end of the day, there's just nowhere for the offense to go with the ball. And nice work there after the catch. He's a little short of the first down after a gain of seven. Now, a big third down. Out of shotgun, Richardson. He'll look deep for Pittman. That is incomplete. And here we go. They're down to what could be their final play. It's fourth down. I think he predetermined that third down throw. And even though the coverage was tight, he still tried to fit the ball in there anyway. And it ended up falling incomplete. I think if he goes through his progressions and has a little bit more trust in his protection, I think there's an easier throw to make out there. And he's going to have a Colts first down. That'll be a gain of 15 on fourth down. Offensively landing a lot of body blows on this drive, Mike. Just the ability to steadily march the ball downfield and remain so efficient, both run and pass. As they continue to wear this defense out, they have to find a way to end this drive with points. Anything short of that would be a bit of a letdown. A great pass rush is like a closer in baseball. When you bring them into the game, it's all but over. And it's exactly the case here. It doesn't result necessarily in a sack, but it was the hit that altered the throw just enough to end that play before it started. They'll try again here. It's second and ten. And he takes it down to the 15-yard line. The Colts will signal for their third and final timeout, and they'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. Set to go now on first and ten. Here's Richardson. That is incomplete. So the task gets more difficult. Time for maybe two plays. That's it. They went for it all on that one and just a little bit off. Ball winds up hitting the ground. They've got to move forward. The opportunities are out there. Better execution, better location, and they got some big plays in their future. That's going to be incomplete, so no help there. And we're likely down to a final snap. There's a saying on defense, Mike, tips and overthrows, you've got to get those. Those got to turn into interceptions. So if you're the offense here, after you saw that ball batted in the air, man, I can promise you it felt like a lifetime waiting to see if it just falls harmlessly to the ground. That'll be incomplete. And now we are down to likely just one more play. You can't fault the quarterback on this one, Mike. He really didn't even have much of an opportunity. By the time he hit the top of his drop and got his eyes downfield, the defense was all over him, and he really had no choice but to just get that ball out of his hand and live to play another snap. That's going to be caught, and it's going to be some points here at the finish line. This is a touchdown. They have fought to the end, but still will come up short. The final act now of this football game, the extra point. The kick here is good, so they are back within a possession. That gets it down to an eight-point game. So it's a win for the visiting Texans. This was a game where both offenses were up and down the field, marching the ball at will, matching each other point for point. But in the end, Got a few more defensive stops than their opponents did. And that was the difference in this one. 
And that'll do it for my partner, Greg Olson. For our entire team, I'm Mike Tirico. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody.